اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد نسل علی رسول الکریم اما بعد So Ramadan is the month of opportunity, it's a, a chance where our ibadat is no more just a routine, a formality. And we got an opportunity. The opportunity was once nafs comes under control. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. So you can inculcate Control the snuffs, control your eyes, control your ears, control your speech, control your heart, your mind, so you govern it according to what Allah and His Rasul wants. Likewise, shaitan is also out of the way. And where the technician who knew how to hit at the right place, little work, great benefit. So we don't need to do a lot. Deen is very easy. We just need to do a little bit, but properly. Now that Formula One driver that had a head start, he had upgraded tech, and he got a bonus. What's the bonus? Three people, the du'as are not refused. One, one of them is a sa'imu hatta yufthir. That a, pass, a person that is fasting, until he breaks his fast, his du'a is accepted. وَإِنَّ لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ دَعْوَةً مُسْتَجَابَةً In that 24 hour day, we got an opportunity where one time when we make a dua, that dua gets accepted. Now a person has a head start, he's got an upgrade, and he's got bonus, maybe nitro, whatever it is. After having all of this and this person loses the race, then we can safely say that there is no person more unfortunate than him. The people in charge of the team, the racing team, they'll automatically immediately fire him. Why? After having all the opportunities to capitalize and win the race, you still lost. And that's why Nabi wasalam once with Sahaba mounted the member. فَلَمْرْتَقَى دَرَجَةً قَالَ آمين. First step, Amin. Second step, Amin. Third step, Amin. فَلَمَّا نَزَلَ قُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَقَدْ سَمِعْنَا الْيَوْمْ شَيْئًا مَا كُنَّا نَسْمَعُهُ Today we are hearing something we don't normally hear. This behavior is very strange to us. So he said, إِنَّ جِبْرِيلْ أَرَضَ لِي Jibril has come and proposed to me. Some rewired. He has commanded me to say Amin. And the first step, Ba'uda man adraka Ramadhalan falam yufad lahu. The destruction, woe, curse on that person who finds this Mubarak month of Ramadan and he does not get his forgiveness done. He does not acquire, he does not get his maghfirat in front of Allah. Qul tu Amin. So I said, Amin. As a shaykh on the hadith, where awwal rahma, first part of Ramadan, we say first 10 days, is uh, close to the rahmat of Allah, wa awsatuha maghfira, the center one, second 10 days, is the forgiveness of Allah, wa akhiru itqum min nar and the last part is emancipation from the fire of Jahannam. As a shaykh gives an interpretation and says, no, when the month of Ramadan starts, those people who have been obeying Allah all the time, from the first day it's mercy. Mercy upon mercy. Ask that person who's obedient to Allah. When Ramadan starts, how much ecstasy, how much enjoyment does he get? So it's a rahmah for that person. And for a person who's in between, it's maghfirah. Because he obeyed Allah, then he did a and etc. So it's an opportunity for maghfirah. But there are many people who are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that person, it's emancipation from the fire of Jahannam. Because from the first day of Ramadan, now he made sincere tawbah. He decided he's going to change his life. It's not another Ramadan like the rest of the Ramadans that have passed. Just the formality 
of cooking, just the formality of trying to prepare the best delicacies and the best meals to satisfy our tongue, but we're not doing anything for our ruh. Just a formality to catch up on sleep, just a formality, etc., etc., etc. But his Ramadan is different. So all these three people will get benefits according to the level that they are on. But on condition, the condition is that from the first day of Ramadan, they capitalize on this opportunity. So as I explained previously, it shouldn't be a routine and routine is not only in Ibadat. Let's take an example, for example, Nikah. When we, uh, the ceremony, the Nikah, the Khutbah has been recited, then the ayat, the masnoon ayat, Ya ayyu alladheena aminu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum taqwa Ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih taqwa Wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham All different places in the khutbah is emphasizing taqwa because marriage is just not meeting somebody. It's not just association with somebody. So a person who doesn't have taqwa, there is a fear, number one, let me explain, that that marriage may not last long. Because this is Allah's creation. No more stranger now. And with regards to a stranger we've been told, so whoever has taqwa, sil man qatak. Somebody breaks ties, you'll join ties. Wa'afu amman dhalamak. Somebody oppresses you, you'll forgive them. أحسن إلى من أساء إليك. Somebody does bad to you. Somebody harms you. You do good to them. والكاذبين الغير والعافين عن الناس. والله يحب المحسنين. When a person was making wudu, the slave girl was pouring water. The jug fell on him, injured him. This was not somebody, family or relative. He became very upset. He wanted to take retribution on the slave. She read, وَالْكَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ Those people that control anger, immediately became calm and relaxed. Then she said, وَالْعَافِينَ أَنِ النَّاسِ Those people that forgive others, Allah loves them. He said, okay, I forgive you. وَاللَّهُ يَبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves those who do good. He said, go, I free you. So if the relationship with strangers are thus, then what should be our relationship between a husband and wife? So when there was no taqwa, that's going to impede the nikah. Secondly is, nikah is a means of increasing our level of taqwa, a means of proximity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are just getting the taste of love so that we can actually understand what the love of Allah is. Layla and Majnoon, the famous story, how madly in love he was with her. So when a person has the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then ibadat will be done with a passion. He should say some ashar, Amuru ala diyari diyara layla, uqabilu dhal jidar wa dhal jidar. I kiss the wall, this wall, this wall. He was kissing the walls. Wa ma hubba diyari shakhabna qalbi. It was not the love of the walls that has taken control of my heart. And I've become infatuated. No. But the fact that Layla walks in these gullies, the walls have become beloved to me. They say, the dog that used to walk in the gullies of Layla used to press the feet of those dogs. He should make ikram of the dogs. Somebody asked him, what's wrong with you? He said, they walked on the step where my Layla walked. His father took him to the Baytullah to make toba. Rabbi in inni tuktu min kulli dhambin walakin min hub layla la atub all in the ghilaf of the Kaaba ya la make toba from all gunas but from the love of layla that one I can't make toba wa yirham Allah abdan qalaha amina and Allah have mercy on the person who says amina on my dua so he said when there is deen then your deen will supersede dunya when there's dunya, your dunya will supersede your deen. So am I re remembering Allah in salat, in sajda before Allah? Or the other way around? So talking about nikah. So when we know the love of the creation, we will know the love of the creator. So nikah was a means for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So the husband and wife, they refocus, they have an objective. Now what happens? We're supposed to love each other, but we hate each other the most. We're supposed to be fighting nafs and shaitan. Now we're fighting with each other. We're supposed to be finding our own faults, introspecting, to see what faults I have. But I'm looking more at the faults of my wife or my husband. They say one Buzruk, the wife complained always, so there was one pundit who flew in the air one day, so she said, you're useless, you're good for nothing. What Buzruk are you? See, he flies in the air. So next day he did the same thing, he, he closed his face, etc. and he flew. Nobody recognized him. So then when he met his wife, he said, you know what, uh, did you see that one Buzruk was flying? Say, mashallah, you see, the Buzruk's flying in the air, you can't even fly. He said, uh, can I tell you something, a secret? That Buzruk that was flying was me. He said, I was wondering why he was flying crooked. I was wondering why he flew crooked. So finding faults all the time. This is an elderly couple. Um, they were discussing one day. So the husband tells the wife that how do you manage or to maintain all my moods? My mood swings, my words, my rebuke. So she says, whenever you do that to me, then I just go clean the toilet. I go clean the toilet. So he said, okay, does that help? She said, yes. Because every time I clean the toilet, I use your toothbrush. I use your toothbrush. So nikah has become a routine. It's a formality. The husband and wife, we're discussing the same things, fighting about the same things, debating about the same things all the day, every day, all the time. Can you imagine the impact that will have in front of the children? Whereas, again, having children is not the formality of just having children. On the day of Qiyamah, Nabi Ali will take pride on this Ummah. Pride on the amount of people of his Ummah going to Jannah and taking others to Jannah. Now, when a couple is intimate, if they never read the Dua, when you read the Dua, the child is protected. So, Tarbiyat starts before inception. But if it's just a routine, if it's a formality, then the consequences will follow. So we need to be checking all our our, our, our amal, our life constantly, all the time. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. When you have this love for Allah, a believer is a construction, is is, is composition, is constitution. Our configuration is nur. Zimbabwe says. Hadi ahl samawati wal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nur of the heavens and that nur transcends to the nur and the hearts of the believer. As Uwe bin Kab, you say, huwa al-mu'min al-ladhi ja'al al-iman wa al-Qur'an fi sadrihi. The ideal place for the nur of Allah is the heart of the believer. Where there is iman, where there is the tilawat of Qur'an in his heart, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with his nur, thumma dhakara nur al mumin. Then Allah speaks about the nur of a mumin, which is the heart of a believer. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nurun ala nur. So when this believer has iman and they perfect the amal, not just formality or routine, imanul abd wa amaluhu. That the Iman we've brought, we've got that Nur, and then the Amal on top of that is Nur upon Nur. Now we are collecting Nur. Now when a person commits a guna with the eye, with the tongue, with the ears, with his mind, then he starts losing this Nur. So a person who has filled all this Nur and collected all this Nur, like we have a a vehicle, somebody has a 5,000 litre petrol tank, somebody has a 50 litre tank, now he wants to fill it. But he wants it to last. But the 5,000 litre tank has a hole, the 50 litre doesn't have a hole. So now this is the month of Ramadan, we're collecting all that nur, we're collecting all this anwarat. But if we make holes, then this month will not be sufficient to carry us forward for the rest of the year. It can't carry you forward. Whereas if we fill this tank, we imbibe the taqwa, 
and we did those amal how it should be done, now the tank is full with the nur of Allah. And when we do in these amal, then we fill in the ruh. So when a person is making dua, he's making tilawat, he's making dhikr, he's reading his salat, the, the combination of all these amal is strengthening the new ruh, and the ruh is getting filled with, with light. Then, Bakul Munatanwi, the friends of Allah, when he was asked, how do they do so much work in so little time? He says, they ruh. So we are talking about this ruh, and when we are collecting all these nur, and we stay away from guna, taqwa. Then the zru moves from the current time zone and moves to another zone. So the body is here on the musalla Taju time. We are reading the Quran, but the ruh moves to another plane, another dimension, another strata, where there is no time. So we see the maximum, uh, Imam Nawi, the maximum amount of kilawat recorded on 24 hours was eight khatams. Eight khatams. So this is a month of opportunity. Let us make sure we don't let this time pass and, and, and go where we don't strengthen our Iman, strengthen our Amal to that level where we perpetuate and it lasts us the whole year. The Amal for today is to read the four Rakats before Asr. So yesterday we did after Dhuhr, two and two. Today before Dhuhr, to be particular about the four rakats before Dhuhr. Rahimullah umran salla qabla al-asri arban. Nabi al-Islam made dua for the person. May Allah have mercy, may Allah have mercy. May Allah's rahmat descend on the person who reads the four rakats before that. Man hafadha ala arba'i rakaatin qabla al-asri lam tamassahu al-nar. That person who reads the four rakats and is particular about it, he'll be protected from the fire of Jahannam. لا تزال أمتي يصلون هذه الأربع قبل العصر حتى تمشي على الأرض مخفورا لها. My ummah will continue reading these four rakats to a stage where Allah will forgive them مغفرة حتما. It's compulsory. It's definite. The مغفرة will be done. And the dua for today is to read the dua بسم الله على ديني وَنَفْسِي وَوَلَدِي وَوَهْ أَهْلِي وَمَالِي A sahabi came to Nabi alayhi salam and he said, Wallah, inni la akhafu fi nafsi wa waladi wa ahli wa mali. I have fear, I have concern on myself, on my children, my family and my wealth. Something can happen to all of these things, O Nabi of Allah. So for protection, Nabi alayhi salam taught him and said, read this dua, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ عَلَى دِينِي وَنَفْسِي وَوَلَدِي وَ أَهْلِي وَمَالِي وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين